Shiva, the ultimate Zen master. This is an unusual topic. No one wants their gods, masters to be presented other way. But the fact is, Shiva is the ultimate Zen master. Shiva is the first and the ultimate Zen master. This will sound unusual if you have a Hindu mindset. Never ask who Shiva is. In response to this question, you can enter into philosophy. On the contrary, when you ask what Shiva is, you enter into science and then you can enter into the realm of techniques. Shiva is science of the eternal. Yes, I say Shiva is the science of eternal. Also, Shiva is the way, technique to enter into innerness. Therefore, it is not and unusual questions. Remember all questions emerge out of a certain mindset that grows and is the gift of your so-called organized religions. Hindus consider Shiva as the as part of the Hindu trinity, the destroyer. But there is much more than that. I am in no way comparing Shiva with anyone else. Shiva is ultimate, all-inclusive. Some time ago, a Muslim priest, Maulana, said, Shiva is our poor father. There was a big hue and cry over it. How can Shiva be the father of Muslims? But this is how our mindset is. Shiva is the father of meditation. He gave 112 techniques of meditation. And there is no meditation technique that Shiva did not speak of. All modern day or ancient techniques were all mentioned by Shiva. The treatise which is known as Vigyan Bhairav Tantra is almost or even more than 5000 years old. Kashmiri mystic Lakshmanju made a mention of these 112 techniques in one of his books. Others have tried to bring a little change here and there and called it original. A little variation and new dimension that they have made and called it original. All of them have done and are doing work in the process of inward journey according to their capabilities. So there is no need and no way to condemn any one of these. In terms of perception, there has not been any being like Shiva. Indeed, perception is all that should matter to you and the rest can be manipulated. Rest is just thrills. In Japan, there was a Zen master called Guki. Whenever anyone would ask him any question, he would simply raise his index finger towards the person. Monks have always wondered why is he showing the index finger always. By showing his single index finger, he is in fact indicating the ultimate reality. Master said, do not look at my finger. It is simply a means. Look at where the finger is pointing towards. So the master 
Buddha always used to show his index finger. Buddha had emphasized on mind, on awareness. It is known as samasti, but it begins with mindfulness. Can awareness be wrong? Yes, it can be wrong as well. When awareness is too much focused on the object, it becomes wrong. Now, Bhuti is showing his finger in response to any question that someone is asking. And people are looking at his finger and saying in response to any question, why does he show the finger? Bhuti is pointing out that only oneness is all the rest is illusion. Finger is not important. People ask many questions. He is saying the reality, the ultimate reality is one. And he is talking about the ultimate reality and oneness of it all. Also he is saying the rest, whatever I am teaching you can be discarded. Whatever I am teaching, it can be discarded. The reality is only one. The moment you have understood that, beyond all duality, beyond all mind sets, beyond, beyond all conditionings, then there is no need. In Zen monastery, the boys, the monks start from very early age. There was a little boy who was near about five when he entered the monastery. He picked up this habit of showing his index finger whenever anyone asked him anything. In fact, he was a little five-year-old boy. He saw Guti showing his index finger. He was fascinated by it. Anyone would ask him anything, he would just show his index finger. And at times when Master would ask him anything, this boy would show his index finger. The Master waited until this boy grew up and became 60 years of age. Then one day, Guti called the boy and raised his finger. Instinctively, out of habit, the boy pointed his index finger. Instinctively, out of habit, the boy pointed his index finger. The master took out his knife and cut off the top of the index finger. This came as a sudden shock and the boy attained. He became enlightened that very moment. The boy got the point. It is the question of it one. It is not the question of one. Instead, when you cut off the finger, it means that it is nothingness that surrounds. Two ways of saying this thing. Oneness and nothingness are two dimensions of reality and two ways of saying that which is one is positive, the other is negative. Neither this nor that. When I say negative in its spiritual terms, it refers to neither this nor that. And what it is, I cannot say. Negative means no, this is not. This is not, that is not, none is not, then what it is, I cannot say. Nothing can be said about that which is. This is called neti neti, neither this nor that. Shiva went one step further. A similar legend goes around him. Shiva had a son named Ganesh, who is depicted as elephant head god. Shiva always carried a three-faced trident which is insignia of Shiva. Trident represents three dimensions. It has three ways, three faces. 
it has three faces in it and it represents three dimensions what are these three dimensions the first is your being the second all that you know and the third is all that you do not know trident represents three dimensions from where it is a hindu symbol it represents you i am speaking i come from a hindu background carry a hindu name an indian face but i am speaking of something which is beyond something that concerns with the transformation of each one of you so how can it be hindu or muslim and that is one of the greatest problem for the transformation is that we go with a particular mindset trident represents three dimensions your being all that you know and all that you do not know and indeed what you do not know rules always over what you know once he returned after a long break he did not see his son now he must have been 10 or 12 years of age the boy came in front holding the trident upright because he was imitating shiva shiva always held the trident a straight upright his hand that was holding the trident is always parallel to the ground and trident is making a 90 degree angle with the earth so boy appeared in front of shiva in the same way and he pointed out the trident towards him shiva looked at the boy and he took off his head not the trident this was followed by a drama that happened and all that is mentioned in the legend how it happened what kind of turmoil it what kind of disturbance it took place that is not my concern that is part of the legend and all those for all those priestly community for me what is important the boy appeared in front of shiva holding the trident upright and he showed him shiva cut off his head i am just mentioning the looks of matter the inside then he placed another head of an elephant in place and the boy became an extraordinary man of intelligence beyond all comparison he became an embodiment of intelligence and is worshiped at the beginning of any hindu prayer or ceremony to seek his blessings so the work is finished unhindered it is said there is nothing that ganesh this elephant had a god he did not know while chopping of his head ganesh became enlightened and he is also the scribe a fast writer who wrote the entire bhagavad the shrimad bhagavat of which bhagavad gita is a part it is said when veda vyas was in a state of trance he had the visions he needed someone to write the vision as he had seen it was ganesh who came and described it with chopping of the head ganesh became enlightened and this is the first zen act long before humanity knew anything about zen however it is said that bodhi dharma is the first patriarch of zen buddhism in 6th century ad almost 1000 years after the advent of gautam the buddha it was the king of wu dynasty who invited god bodhi dharma to come to china 
a great master is coming. Everyone, including the king, was excited to receive a great master. So he came along with his king, the important ministers and the elite to welcome a master on the border. Bodhidharma came with one slipper in his foot and the other on the head. This embarrassed the king. Bodhidharma said, this is how I am. And the story goes on. Bodhidharma remained facing the wall for nine years. He said, there is no point in turning the face towards anyone because no one listens. Everyone is like a wall because of their preconditionings and mindset. So I will wait for the right person. After nine years, a man named Huineen came. He said, Bodhidharma, turn your face towards me, otherwise I will cut off my hands. Bodhidharma said, that will not do. If you are ready to cut off the head, then something can happen. Winning said, I am ready to do anything. Cut off the head. Cut off the head means you are cutting off symbolically all conditions, mindset, memory to begin a new journey. Everything in the life that we do is guided by a memory. And memory is of the past. I will not go into that much in detail today. So Shiva is the first Zen master long before humanity knew about Zen. Anything that exists, also all techniques that you can conceive in this world is part of life and being of Shiva. In fact, these emerged out of Shiva. He is utterly complex, yet so simple. And the most important thing about Shiva is that he has no philosophy, no theory or anything like that. He simply had methodology. And Vigyan Bhairav Tantra is the ancient most Treaties. It comes from three words. Vigyan means science. Science means methodology, no philosophy. Bhairav means that which is beyond the body. Tantra is the body, is the way. And in this treatise, Shiva is speaking, is responding to his concert who asks many questions. And questions like, what is this wonderful universe? What is thy reality? And so on and so forth. In response to each question, Shiva gave a technique. And these techniques comprise the text of Vikyan Bhairav Tantra, the treatise on meditation. Guti gave a lesson to the boy by cutting his finger. Shiva gave methods that are 100% scientific. First he gave 106 ways and then later on added 6 more ways as the ultimate way of techniques of meditation. So initially he gave 106, then 6 more were added as the ultimate ways of techniques. This is scientific because there are 112 chakras in human body. So why did he give 112 techniques of meditation? When there are 114 chakras, remember there are two chakras which lie outside the body. They are not part of the body. And the meditation techniques relates to bringing a transformation into body-mind realm. These 
two are the are only for those who are, have attained to the state beyond body and have transcended the body mind realm so there remains only 112 chakras so these 112 meditation technique relates clearly demonstrate how the physical body is made and through each one of these techniques you can realize there is a beautiful story when Shiva was expanding the mechanics of life with seven sages these are known as Saptrushi and it is said they are part of the cosmos as seven stars Shiva was explaining these the mechanics of life with these seven sages, he had one witness, his wife Parvati, who was already a realized being, was a witness to him. In fact, it was Shiva who made her attain to this realization in a very intimate manner. Whenever there is an intimate relationship between the two, that is why, in order to attain to this intimate relation, the masters have been, Sufi masters have emphasized on male-female relation. Through male-female relationship, it is very easy to attain to enlightenment. The two have to be trusting one another, but it seldom happens because, in the first place, the Two husband and wife are not enlightened and even if one of them is enlightened because of the physical relationship the other does not consider him or her as enlightened one and this is what creates the problem very rarely through this conjugal relation the two attain to enlightenment, but this is the ultimate. This is why this concept of male-female relationship has been emphasized. In fact, Shiva made her attain to this realization in a very intimate manner. But with seven sages, he went in a totally different dimension of exploring. Parvati, his concert knew it in a different way, but Shiva was explaining many other dimensions and exploring all the unknown dimensions so that nothing can remain beyond its jurisdiction. Parvati realized something that happened to her so naturally in such a simple way is indeed a complex process. As he was expanding, Shiva explained there are 112 ways for one to attain. Parvati being realized and ever born, being his wife, she has the audacity or liberty to speak while Shiva is explaining something. Parvati being realized and ever all his wife said, why only 112 ways? There have to be more ways to attain. Shiva was exploring possibilities of expansion. So he realized this to be a, a disturbance. So he brushed her aside. You are exploring something and someone makes a personal comment that I have attained in such a simple way and you are saying that there are only 112 techniques. This is the liberty that wives have with their husbands. You are exploring something and someone makes a personal comment, a whimsical one. She will brush her aside. Parvati said she will explore and find more. Shiva told her to go and find out. So it is said Parvati went into intense sadhana for many hundreds of years to explore anything deeper than that. 
When she returned, Shiva was still explaining to those seven sages and expanding the science of eternal. She being his wife came near him, but instead of sitting next to him, she sat one step below. For Shiva to know that she had failed in her efforts, but she did not want the seven sages to know this, so she sat one step below Shiva. And in that, through that gesture, he made Shiva know that she had failed in the challenge that she had proved that there are bound to be more than 112 techniques. But she did not want this to be known to those sages. But certainly she wanted Shiva to know. These 112 methods are mechanics of life. No philosophy, no teachings, no social relevance, simply science. So, social relevance is necessary to round it off. He gave science. Out of this, individual masters have created technology. Shiva gave the science no methodology. All technology that you are enjoying today in myriad forms as a smartphone, smart TVs, smart watches, etc. have a science behind it. Isn't it so? And it is the science that works for you, but that does not matter to you. There was a science that was working behind televisions. The technology improved, but not the science. All the computer technology works on binary theorem, binomial theorem, which uses only two numbers, 0 and 1, and different configurations. Today we had we have a smartphone which have more capabilities, smart TVs, smart watches. This is advancement of the technology, but the science behind this remains the same. If someone does not grasp the science behind all technology, you have nothing to enjoy. Someone grasp the science behind the mechanism of, of phones to improve upon technology, to create a simple software, tremendous effort and logarithm is needed. Sometimes you receive your email in coded forms. This you cannot understand. It appears gibberish, but someone else can understand this. Also, it is because of this that mail goes in the coded form. When you are speaking face to face, sound waves that you create are amplified or reached to you. If we are sitting in a small place, or maybe large, a system to amplify the voice is used. We are sitting face to face as I speak, sound waves are created and without any interpretation, interference, with a slight amplification, the sound waves reach you. And when I speak or you speak to someone through phone or Skype or any other device, sound waves are created. These are in analog format. These are then converted as electromagnetic waves and reach your system that once again converts those electromagnetic sound waves as in analog format and you can hear the sound. What Shiva is talking to those sages is pure science, not technology. He left this up to those sages to develop the technology for the people who will sit in front of him on a particular day. 
on a particular day when there is a group of people sitting the intonation the voice modulation the gaps all differ and it is the voice mod modulation gaps intonation that creates a technology that creates an effect but the science behind is how to transform first to understand the silence that pervades the entire cosmos and then to communicate it to those in a format that is accessible that is understandable to you all so what shiva is doing He is talking to those sages. Is pure science, no methodology, no technology. He left this up to those sages to develop the technology for the people who will sit in front of him on a particular day. Day, Shiva is science, not technology. Science is based. Science is the basis of all technology. The technology of the iPhones, the smartphones, the smart TVs, the smart watches, and all that you see keeps on changing from time to time. Science is the base of all technology. A master is one who understands this eternal silence, and he gives a technique for this science to a particular person. master understands the eternal science all that is behind and then he provides a technique for a particular person and you remember you will recall when a technique is given to you you may wonder how with this technique i will attain to love how will i attain to fulfillment within me just by fixing my room or just cooking or just doing some trivial acts he is he understands the entire science behind it he develops methodology techniques according to an individual person gadgets that are relevant today were not known in the past and what are relevant today may become redundant tomorrow just look into television technology it goes on changing at a rapid pace what kind of gadget is needed now will depend on who is sitting in front of you and this is why i say shiva is the first who is a master whose focus was on science and making you aware of it and so that you can understand the science he is the master of the masters and the first person master